ברוכים הבאים. Welcome everyone. After last week's gathering that we had here, we had so many requests from the community, from so many people, to do it again. So I want to thank Rabbi Joey Haber today for joining me, for joining us. Again, thank the Salem brothers for making themselves available to do this. The truth is, a lot has changed in one week. Yesterday, I felt like this was not something we should be doing. And I was about to cancel it. So many people are suffering. People passed away. Rabbis in hospitals. And it's going on as I speak. How can I sit here with the rabbi and the hazanim and sing? It felt so inappropriate. But I'd like to share with you the reason why we decided that despite all the suffering and despite all the pain that we're living with right now, why it is appropriate to have this gathering, this event. There's so many people to pray for. I could stop mentioning one name after the other. Unfortunately, to say Le'elu Nishmat for as well. Tonight's event has been generously sponsored for Refuah Shelema of Rabbi Edmond Nahum, our beloved Rabbi Edmond Ben Rahel, by his students. They sponsored this event in his honor. They also asked me to mention our good friend, our community's good friend, Harry Ajmi, Hashem should give him refuah shalema, Aharon Hananya ben Le'ah. Amongst all the other rabbis and people that need a quick and speedy recovery. So why is this event okay to have? I'd like to quote you from the Zohar Kadosh, something Rabbi Nahum would be very much appreciative of. And I'm sure if we asked him, he would appoint to this Zohar. In Parashat Terumah, Rabbi Abba says, he brings a pasuk from Tehillim, Mizmor le David, the song of David HaMelech, Bihiyoto bemidbar Yehuda. The Mizmor was said when he was in the desert of Yehuda. The Zohar says, how come David HaMelech has to tell us where he was located when he said this song? Many songs we find and we don't see he told us the location of the song. Answers the Zohar by bringing other examples where David, in fact, does mention the situation he's in. Like when he was running away from Abimelech. Like when they told him Shaul was coming after him. Bebo hazifim v'yomeru Shaul. Says the Zohar, to teach le'ahza'a le'kol b'nei alma, to teach the world. Shivhe de David, the praise of David Amelech. De af al gav de bet hava, even though he was in pain. Vehavorat fe abatre, and people were running after him to kill him. Haya mishtadel lomar shirin ve tishbahin le kuchabirichu. He continued to sing and he continued to praise Hashem with his words. 
That's why it says Bemidbar Yehuda, because he was running away and he was at a time of trouble. He was in a tzara. And what did he do? He said, Mizmor le David. Those are the words of the Zohar Kadosh. The Gemara in Masechet Berachot. On the Pasuk in Tehillim that says, Chesed u Mishpat Ashira. The Gemara says, what does it mean? Kindness and judgment I sing. The Gemara says, Im Chesed. If Hashem is giving me kindness, Ashira, I will sing. Ve'im mishpat. And if it's judgment, if it's deen, if it's difficult, Ashira, I will sing as well. Hesed u mishpat Ashira. Yes, it is proper to sing when a person is desperate, no matter what the situation is. I saw a story about the Hatan of the Tiferet Shlomo who was once traveling and he went to visit the great rabbi from Kutsk. And the Kutsk Rebbe asked him, could you share with me something, a Hidush from your father-in-law? And he told him, yes, it was Parashat Haremot. He told him, the Pasuk says, Vayidom Aharon. When Aharon's children, they quickly passed away. Aharon kept quiet. Says the Tiferet Shlomo. That's a great level where a person can have such sudden, quick suffering and they keep quiet and they don't open their mouth. But he says David Melech showed there was a higher level. When we say, in Mizmor Shir Hanukkah Abayit Le David, we say Le Ma'an Yezamercha Kavod Velo Yidom, that a person sings and he doesn't keep quiet. That's even a greater level. The great Rabbi was so intrigued and inspired by those beautiful words. That's why David Melech says. Yomam Yetzave Adonai Hazdo. Yomam when it's daylight, when things are beautiful outside. Yomam Yetzave Hashem Hazdo. A person should know it's Hashem commanding that kindness, not to take the credit for himself. Uba Laila. But when it's nighttime, when it's darkness, Shiro Imi. Then I start to sing. To Hashem, I plead with Him with my words, with my music. That's why it says in Yetziat Mitzrayim, Vayar Batsar Lahem, Hashem saw that Am Yisrael was in a difficult situation. Beshomo et Rinatam, when He heard their Rina. It should say, when you heard their prayers. What's Rinatam? Rina is a song. Again, you see, when a person is desperate, there are certain things and feelings that are only able to be expressed through song. It's not a time to get together and to have a party. It's not a time to come and dance, but it's a time to express our souls through sheer, through a song like David Melech. In fact, the tour says, he, was, he writes all the different mizmorim that person should say when he's in ta'anit, when it's a difficult time. And one of them is, Halel HaGadol, Hodul Adonai Kitov. That was one of the mizmorim that the tour writes in Siman Tafkuf Ayin Tet. So it is appropriate for us tonight to get together and to, to speak our hearts, to let it flow, to ask Hashem to have Rahmanut on us, to plead with Him. Of course, Hashem is a, Rah He's a Rahman. It is us that have to press the button. It is us that have to make the move. And we're here tonight together. The entire community, Klal Yisrael, we were, tr we're trying to press the button. 
going to be singing the first song. It's a song that is the focus of every single Jew or needs to be. And that is that Am Nisrael, we are a nation because of our Torah. When we stay close to our Torah, this is when we earn to be the Am Hashem. That's when we have Hatzlaha. The Rambam writes that when a tzara comes, lo alenu, when a terrible time comes, a plague, whatever, a milhama comes, the Rambam writes in Hilchot Ta'anit, he says, midarkea teshuva, it is the way of teshuva, that when a person is going through a tzara, that a person should make repentance, he should look into his ways. Ve'yed'u'a kol, writes the Rambam, and everyone should know, It's because of our actions. That's why this happened to us. And that's what caused the tzara to happen. Says the Rambam, but if they don't cry out, and they don't look into themselves, and they don't see it as something that was caused by their own actions, Says the Rambam, This is cruelty. Meaning if a person says, you know what, it's not, what does it have to do with me? The whole world is suffering. Everybody has issues. What's not my actions? Says the Rambam, if you think it's me, if it's just the norm, that's just what happens sometimes. He says that's called cruelty. And that will be a reason why Hashem has Shalom will continue to make it worse. Like it says in Behukotai, Vehalachtem Aimi Bekeri. If you say that this is just, I mean, just something that happens in the world, Vehalachti Aimachem Bahamat Keri. God forbid Hashem, I'll go worse, I'll do more. It is these times that we have to look into ourselves, every one of us, and we have to make Teshuvah. Hashem is shaking the world. He literally put the entire world on hold. And worse, there are people suffering. It is a time to make teshuvah. It's a time to cry out. It's a time to make commitments. And the Torah is the gift that Hashem gave us. That we can return to it. It's a ayatz hayim. It is a tree of life to those who hold on to it. Those who support it. The ways of Torah are sweet. All its roads are shalom. Please, Hashem, help us return close to you. We want to be close to you. Show us the way to get close to you and your Torah. Bechavod. Okay.
Anticipate Shabbat, and we're excited for Shabbat, even from already Wednesday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. And that's because we're physically tired and weak. But on these weeks, our anticipation of Shabbat is completely different. On these weeks, we're looking forward to Shabbat, maybe not because we're physically tired, we've been home all week. But we look forward to Shabbat because it can elevate us. And it can raise us up. Which is why our next song in its description of Shabbat and Shabbat coming in. And our enthusiasm for Shabbat describes it as Bo'i Kala. As the bride. Because instead of looking at Shabbat as a day to relax and to chill and to rest. Maybe almost like someone would look at a ripped pair of jeans. Instead, we're going to look at Shabbat as a bride in her gown, a time for elevation. In these weeks where we're mentally exhausted, where all we're hearing about is pain, the bride, the kala, when Shabbat comes in, we're excited. We're excited that it's going to give us elevation, that we could turn off the frustration and the sadness of the week. And bring in the stability and the elevation of Shabbat. I'm going to tell you one quick little story. In the 1990s, on the front page of the New York Times, every Friday morning, it would say the time of candle lighting. There was a wealthy Jew who paid for it every week. And then he fell on hard times, and towards the end of the 90s, he no longer had the means to pay for it. So the New York Times, the most famous newspaper in the country, stopped printing the time of candlelighting. And then it came Y2K, January 1st, 2000. There was a lot of excitement in the country at that time. There was a lot of anxiety and anticipation. And a lot of different publications tried to come up with something different, something unique for that first day of the new millennium. The New York Times had an idea that we're going to have three front pages. The front page of January 1st, 2000, the day that it was. The front page of 100 years prior, January 1st, 1900. And the front page of 100 years from now, that January 1st, 2100. And so... When the paper came out that day, and you can, whatever it had about what happened in the year 1900, you could imagine, and whatever was happening on January 1st, 2000, and then it had stories that they anticipated would take place on January 1st, 2100. And they had different crazy things, maybe flying cars, maybe people living on the moon. Who knows? And on the bottom, it had the time of candle lighting. So the man who sponsored it called up the editor who was, had become his friend. He said, I don't understand. Why would you put the time of candle lighting? I haven't paid for it for a few years. He says, because January 1st, 2100 is going to be a Friday. And when we were sitting in our boardrooms meeting and deciding what that day is going to look like, we had no idea. Would there be people on the moon? Would there be people who have aliens? Who has any idea what the world is going to look like at that time? But there's one thing we knew. Jewish women would be lighting candles on Friday afternoon. And so that's why we put it. And so now, it's now more than ever that we can't wait for the stability and the strength and the elevation that Shabbat gives us. The excitement that you feel on the day you saw your bride is the excitement that we feel for the Shabbat, for its strength, and for its elevation, and for its holiness, when hopefully we could turn off the sadness and bring in the beauty of the bride.
Friday night, we say, Veshameru Bene Israel et Shabbat. How the Jewish people keep the Shabbat. We express how the Shabbat is a berit olam. It is a covenant with Hashem that is eternal. Beni uben Bene Israel says Hashem. Between me and Am Yisrael, Ot Hi Le'olam. Not only is it a covenant, it is a sign. It is a sign that I am the Creator. It is a sign that you are my people. We don't wear tefillin 
on Yom Shabbat because Shabbat is a sign. We don't need another sign. Shabbat is not just another mitzvah in the Torah. Shabbat and its observance defines a Jew. If he is a Jew, if he is connected to Hashem or if he's not. That is why when someone wants to tell you that he's observant, if he has a restaurant and he wants to tell you, yes, you can eat by me. He doesn't say Shomer Kashrut. He says Shomer Shabbat. Why does he say Shomer Shabbat? Because Shabbat is the ot. It is the sign that a Jew is connected to his creator. Hashem gave us the Shabbat, Berit Olam, that is our connection between us and Him. When you walk through the streets of a Shabbat neighborhood, it's like you enter a different country. The dress is different. The food is different. The talk is different. The movements are different. Shabbat is like a country within a country. Am Yisrael is already a country. But on Shabbat, it takes on a new meaning. Why? Because the king is here. Boi be shalom. When Shabbat comes, Hashem comes closer to us. There is a famous story about one of the descendants of David Melech, His name was Rabbi Bustenai. He was a wonder child. Everyone spoke about his great wisdom. The king heard about his amazing ability, so he invited him, he summoned him to come to the king. And the king and his advisors were so impressed by this young man who stood before them until the night, without turning his head, even slightly without moving his foot, after a while a fly came on his forehead. He didn't move. He allowed the fly to stay on him. The fly started to bite into him and draw blood. He didn't move. Didn't brush it away. The king found it strange, so he asked him, why don't you brush the fly away? He told him, your majesty, we have a tradition in our family that when in the presence of a king, one doesn't lift a hand or a foot without the king's permission. The king was very impressed. By his answer. That is Shabbat. Shabbat is when we are in the presence of the king. And therefore on Shabbat, before we move something, before we wear something, we first ask, wait, do I have permission? It's different than the week. It's a different country. It's the sign of a Jew. How much? Is Shabbat close to his heart? How careful he is in every part of its observance. So hard for us these days to really know why and how. Who knows what the reason is? Who knows what we have to fix? There are plenty of things we can point to. But we do have our holy books. And I will just read for you what it says in your Miyahu and Navi who lived before the destruction of the Bet HaMikdash. It says that Hashem sent, Eliyahu, sent Yirmiyahu with a message to Am Yisrael. He told him, go stand in the streets of Yerushalayim and tell them the following. He says, be careful on Shabbat. Do not carry on Shabbat. Do not do any melachot. 
Hashem says, tell them to sanctify the Shabbat like I, like I told their fathers. And then he says a very powerful statement. He says, And if you don't listen after I warn you not to keep the Shabbat, you don't listen. He says, Hashem says, God forbid, which actually happened. He says, I will burn the city of Yerushalayim. Out of all the things that Hashem could have pointed to, the one thing that He told Yirmiyahu and Navi was to tell them about Shabbat. And that's what we're here today to celebrate, to celebrate our Shabbat. We're here to awaken observance of Shabbat. Shabbat is not just another thing. It's something that each and one, every one of us has to take to his heart and make sure it's done perfectly. The beauty of Shabbat. Imagine the blessing that we have when we observe Shabbat. When we say, Shalom Aleichem. And Barichuni la Shalom. The bracha that comes when a person keeps the Shabbat close to his heart. Chavon.
שלום עליכם, מלאכי השרת, מלאכי עליון. מי מלך, מלאכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך ברכוני לשלום, מלאכי השלום, מלאכי עליון. מי מלך מלאכי המלאכים, הקדוש ברוך הוא. שלום, מלאכי השלום, מלאכי עליון. מי מלך מלאכי המלאכים הקדוש ברוך הוא. nothing that we worry about more than our children. We think about them, we think about their future, we hope for their future, and we care more than anything about their spirituality and their Torah mitzvot. The stipler Gaon was known to have said that raising children is 50% peace in the home and 50% praying for them. And so in this coming song, we're going to pray to Hashem for our children. But we're going to speak directly to those children. And we're going to ask Hashem that He put on their face, that you should have the fear of God on your face your entire life, and you should have children and grandchildren that follow the ways of Torah and mitzvot. In the past, we often care about the spirituality of our kids, but it most often happens outside of our homes. We send them to school in the morning and watch them come home at night. Now we don't do that. Now we watch their spirituality in front of our eyes. We watch them call the teacher or zoom into the class. We watch them engage in the Torah and mitzvot, and we watch them get excited about the learning. Teaching Torah, their growth in Torah is not something that happens in a shul. Right now, it's something that happens in our home, under our noses. My own sons turned the dining room table into a bet midrash, into a place of learning. On Friday night, after we light the candles, our mothers pray for us and for our kids and for their children. They pray at that time because right after you've done a mitzvah, that's when the, your prayers are most powerful. It's why at the end of Birkat Amazon, we end it with one request after another, Harachaman, Harachaman, where they don't have to do a Birkat Amazon, but it's right after Birkat Amazon because I just did a mitzvah and now my prayers are strong. So mothers, after they light the candles on Friday night and performed a mitzvah that seems to be focused on them, 
They then ask Hashem for their number one request. Take care of the spirituality of my sons and spirituality of my daughters. The stipler Gaon was the one who said that it's 50% prayer. He obviously knew because his son is the great leader of our time, Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky. His tefillot were answered. And so right now as you listen to this and you hear the Chazanim sing, there are mothers sitting right next to their daughters and fathers sitting right next to their sons. You've watched them learn. You've watched them grow. You've watched them help you in the home. You've watched them help you prepare for Pesach. Now let's take the opportunity to pray to Hashem that their, his, their love for Him, their fear for Him, it should be on your face, my son. And you should have children and grandchildren that follow in the legacy of our forefathers that continue with our traditions and continue with our ways, our Torah and our mitzvot, that the chaos that the world brings, please, Borei Olam, don't let it affect my home. Don't let it affect my sons and my daughters.
נשמת כל חי, is thousands of years old. The words that describe the soul of every living creature that blesses Hashem and thanks Him for every breath that He takes, thanks Him for His life, for his health, for his family, for his children, for his parnasa. This special song, we say it every Shabbat. We say it the night of the Haggadah. There is a Kabbalah from Rabbi Yehuda Hasid that if a person is in a difficult time, and time of sorrow, that he should accept upon himself that when he gets saved from that sara, that he's going to say nishmat with thanks and with song in front of ten people. Borei Olam, we're going to say nishmat And only for the ten people. We're going to say it with thousands of people. We're going to say it with millions of people. We're going to say Nishmat together. We accept upon ourselves. Save us. And we're going to say it with such happiness. With such song. We accept, I accept upon myself. I'm sure everybody who's watching is accepting upon himself. We're going to say nishmat. It's not only the words of nishmat. It's not, you say the words and the miracle happens. It's the message of nishmat. The message of nishmat is to be a, an appreciative person. To say thank you to Hashem for everything He gives us. It makes our life richer. It makes us more honest. It makes us more humble. It makes us happier. When we're able to say, thank you, it's not me. What did I do? Thank you for everything you gave me. During life, we take things for granted. Boy, do we take things for granted. And sometimes you have to lose something before you can appreciate it. It says... In Mizmor Le Toda, the song of thanks. In this song of thanks, that each person who has a miracle happened to him, Hashem saved him. He goes to bring a korban toda. He brings an offering of thanks. And he says, This Mizmor, what are the words? He gets up and he says, let the entire earth sing to Hashem. Somebody came to Rav Chaim Kanievsky, Shlita, and he asked him, this person had a personal miracle happen to him. Hashem saved him from a car accident. Hashem saved him from a, a, an Ill illness. So he has to bring thanks, an offering, great but the entire world has to sing for him? Does he think so much of himself that when he has a celebration, the entire world should come and celebrate? Why is he calling the entire world? What do they have to do with the miracle that happened to him? And he shared a beautiful story that happened in B'nai Brak a few years back. 
there was a Bet Knesset. They pray Shahrit every morning. One morning, somebody comes and brings in a Sauda food. It's unusual in Bnei Brak in that shul. They usually pray and go home to eat. Somebody brought Sauda. He makes an announcement. By the end of the tefillah, please join me for Saudat Mitzvah. They sit down after the tefillah and they eat, they enjoy the food. He gets up and he says, Rabotai, thank you for joining me. I just want to tell you why we're having this meal. Yesterday, I was crossing the street outside and I got hit by a car. And I thought my life was over. And Baruch Hashem, I was saved. So I came today to thank Hashem. Next day, somebody comes to the Bet Knesset, one of the members, and he also brings food. And after the tefillah, he makes an announcement, please join me for a Saudat Mitzvah. They wonder, 30 years we're praying here, nobody ever brought food. Two days in a row, what happened to you? He gets up and he says, Rabota, yesterday I was here. I heard what this man had to say, how he got hit by a car, how Hashem saved him. He said, I was sitting there and I was thinking to myself, 30 years I'm crossing that street. Cars passing left and right. And not one time I got hit by a car. Who has to say greater thanks? The person who got hit by a car or the person who never got hit by a car? He says, I'm coming to say thank you, Hashem. At 30 years, I didn't get hit by a car. Hariyahu ladonai kol ha'aretz. Says David HaMelech, when you see somebody gets saved, everybody has to thank Hashem that they didn't even have that problem. Can we appreciate that today? If you're walking around healthy and you're breathing and you're not aching, you have so much to be thankful for. But that's not just for Corona time. That's for life. It's a life message. Nishmat is a life message. The purpose of this segula is when, God forbid, a person is in sorrow, it's because he's not appreciating, perhaps, enough what Hashem is giving him. And he's saying, I'm going to accept upon myself that going forward, I'm going to accept and I'm going to appreciate everything. And that will be the reason for Hashem to save him. Hashem loves us and wants us to be appreciative so we can enjoy our life and do the right things. Chavon.
approximately 900 years ago, there was a great rabbi who lived his life with a lot of pain. He was unbelievably poor and not well off, yet his legacy is one that is so powerful because he left us a commentary on the Tanakh and he left us a number of poems. The rabbi's name is Ibn Ezra or Abraham Ibn Ezra. The song we're about to sing was written by him. And if you'll notice in the stanzas that are coming, the first letter of each stanza spells out his name, Abraham. Aleph, Bet, Resh, He, Amen. But it's the essence of the song that to me is so powerful and inspiring. Because in the song he says, Hashem, I want to praise your name. My soul will praise your name. And I thank you with a lot of pahad ve'ema, with a tremendous amount of fear. Because I stand amongst your kahal, lecha ekra ve'ekof rosh, and I bow and I lower my head. Because I'm praising you, Bore Olam, but I'm praising you with a tremendous amount of fear in my heart and humility in my body as I bend to you and humble to you, and I'm humble myself to you. And then he says the words, the world stands on nothing. And it's usually just refers to the fact that if you look at the planet Earth, it seems to be in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the, in the middle of no place. It's not held by anything. But I think now we appreciate this even more. Because the whole world is stopped. From Italy to France, from Israel to China, to the United States of America, from the East Coast to the West Coast. Stop over nothing. We can't see what it is. We can't watch it. There's no enemies with rockets and missiles. There's nobody to be angry at. It's just nothing. We still don't even know how it began. Was it from a lab or a little bat in the middle of a marketplace that if I was passing the marketplace, I wouldn't have even seen it happen on that day. Yet Hashem on that day produced nothing that would stop the whole world. And when we sing this song, we bow our head to Bore Olam because we recognize that when we see nothing, we see you in control. I'll give you a tiny anecdote before we begin the song. This happened to me two and a half months ago. And I've told the story many times since. I took my family for the first weekend of winter vacation. I took them upstate to a bungalow colony for Shabbat. We spent it quietly. And then it was snowing on Shabbat afternoon, but I had to get back once Motzeh Shabbat. So Motzeh Shabbat, I took five of my children, my wife and I in our minivan, and we started driving from Route 17 back to Brooklyn. It was about two and a half hour drive. A few minutes into the drive, I start to feel the car slid a little bit. It's sliding. So I grab a hold of the wheel and I figure I'm going to roll with it. And next thing you know, I completely lost control of the wheel. And the car spun off the road, hit a railing on the right side that I'd later find out had a 500 foot drop, and then spun back in 360 into this three lane highway and spun back to the other side of the road and stopped at the railing on the left side. When the car stopped, the first thing I did is look back and I saw that my kids were okay. I couldn't believe it. And I jumped out of my car. And as I jumped out of the car, I saw a Hasidic man pull his car up behind me. I said, who are you? He says, my name is Yossi Angle. I'm driving an empty minivan. He says, it's freezing cold outside. It was 15 degrees that night. He says, Take, turn off the car. Your car is banged up in a million places. Put all your children in my car. He waited for the cops. He waited for Hatzalah. He waited for the tow truck. He waited for them to move my car and unload it. Waited an hour and a half and then drove me back to my door to my house. 
And on the way, I asked him, what do you do? He says, I'm part of an organization called Chesed Drivers. And we take people from Borough Park and we drive them to uh, see a loved one in the hospital in Sloan or NYU or Columbia. I said, wow. He said, you do it on the way to work? He says, most people do. He says, well, for me, I work in Borough Park. So I wake up in the morning, I go to Shaharit, I take someone to the hospital, then I drive someone back, and then I go to work. I said, you do it for free? He says, yes. I said, how many times a month do you do it? He says, 50 to 80 times a month. I said, for free? And I said, one second. And you're the person that Hashem put right behind me as my car was spinning? Because you see, when we think the world is in chaos... The one thing we know is that he is in control. That Borei Olam is running this world and he's watching us and he's taking care of us. And I have no idea why we have to endure this pain. I have no idea why some families have to suffer. I have no idea. But I know Borei Olam, when it feels like nothing is happening, Hashem is running everything. And if there's one lesson that we learned from this time that nobody could disagree with, it's the fact that there's only one being that's in control of the world. So we're going to sing this song as we bend our head and we bow ourselves in humility, in pahad, and fear and awe of Bore Olam, who's completely in control. Oh, uh -huh. 
comes from the Hallel, describes a person who's all tied up, whether it's actually tied up or figuratively tied up, and he's pleading with Hashem to let loose of his ties. He should be released from them. And here are the words that he says. Anna Hashem. Please Hashem. Ani Avdecha. I am your servant. Ani Avdecha ben Amatecha. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. Pitahta le moserai. You have released me from my bonds. Here we understand the secret of being released from the things that tie us. We have to make a commitment. Ki ani avdecha. Avdecha means I am committed to do the will of Hashem. And I know that I can fulfill the commitment because I am Ben Amatecha. I come from a nation whose fathers and mothers and grandparents and great grandparents were of the Hashem. The millions of Jews that have lived before us who dedicated their life to the Almighty. I know I could do it. Because I come from them. A time like we're in is a time where a person needs to make a commitment. And it, now it's easy to make a commitment. A few years ago there was a very big jackpot. And the Powerball was in the hundreds of millions, maybe a billion dollars, I don't remember. And one of the organizations, Jewish organization, they decided that they're going to go on a campaign and they're going to get people to commit to give a part of their earnings if they actually win on the chance that you win half a billion dollars. How much would you give us? People were giving like wild numbers. One gave 100 million, one gave 50 million, one gave 20 million. They collected on paper billions of dollars. People ready to give. I asked myself, why are these people wasting their time? Why are they taking a chance on the person who might win? Why not just wait to see who actually wins? And when he wins, they'll go to him and they'll tell him how much you're going to give us, which save them and others time and energy. And the answer is very obvious that after a person receives something, now he thinks that it became part of him. Once you have it, it's very hard to let go of it. You think you always had it. You think you owned it forever. Once the guy wins, a second later it's over. Now you ask him how much you give. I'm not sure. Let's see. Maybe, maybe not. But before you have it, you know you don't have it. So of course if I would get it, I'll give some of it. Why not? That's how it is when a person is in our times where we don't have the things that we normally have. When we have everything, it's sometimes hard to commit. We feel we can't give up anything. I can't give up my time. I can't give up my this. I can't give up my Shabbat. I can't give up my that. I can't give up my money. can't give it up. It's all mine. But when today, when there's nothing, it's mine. We're just barely holding on for our life. We're happy that we're breathing. So now is a time where a person can make a commitment to what will be. When the Yeshua comes, what's going to be? To pray every day with a minyan, a good minyan that's going to pray without talking. No more talking in the Bet Knesset. I spoke to someone last week who actually talks a lot in the Bet Knesset. It's a good man. 
but it's not one of his strengths. He called me, he says, and he's feeling fine. He said, I accept upon myself that I will never again talk during tefillah. And I'm going to make sure that others don't either. Now is the time to do it. When you're not going to shul. When you're not, you're not praying with people. Now is the time to make a commitment. Before the time comes, that Be'ezrat Hashem will come very quickly. It's the time to say, Ani avdecha. Hashem, I'm committed. I'm going to do it. I'm going to pray the right way. I'm going to keep Shabbat the right way. I'm going to make time to learn. I'm going to learn the right way. And with that, Pitahta lemoserai. I've seen great niflaot wonders come out of this song. People who have asked Hashem for this song, ask Hashem for spiritual success. You won't be disappointed. Ask Hashem to help you be a better Jew to be a better husband, to be a better father, to be a better person. Ask Hashem to help you. Ani I want. Hashem pitahta lemoserai. He's going to allow us. Just ask. Chavon.
הלב שלי נקרע לשניים, מה שלא ראתה שפחה למים, כמו סופה מן הים עולה, כמו תופעה של מרים פועם, ואין תרופה בעולם. הלב שלי מרים ידיים, כבר מועד לומד על הרגליים. שבר כלי שבו כבר מה, שמיים הם לי חומה, איך אבור בתוך הים, ביבשה. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מזבדי למחול, לזכך את החול, לרכך בי משכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את הלב. הלב שלי נקרא לשניים, חציו השם וחציו לשם שמיים, כמו סופה מן הים עולה. כמו תופעה שמרים בוהן, ואין תרופה בעולם ללב. ורק אתה יכול להפוך מזבדי למחול, לזכך את החול, לרכך את הכול. משכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את הלב. יש עוד שר שמציג לצון, ואין ציר שיצג לצון. רק אני מול ים שלם ולב שבור ורק אתה יכול להפוך מזבדי למחול לזכך את החול לרכך בי הכל ורק אתה מבין איך לגשת ללב שלי משכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את הלב. רק אתה יכול להפוך מזבדי למחול, לזכך את החול, לרכך בי הכל. רק אתה מבין איך לגשת ללב שלי. משכך כל כאב שבי, מרפא את הלב. בר מצווה או just a trip. Maybe you went with your children or your cousins, an extended family, or maybe you went there to learn in yeshiva. And when you get to the country, after a few days, after a few days of visiting Gedolim and praying at holy graves, going to the Kotel, experiencing a Friday afternoon preparation for Shabbat, as hundreds of people shop for the same thing you do. And then maybe you've spent a Friday night at the Kotel, and you watch Jews from all over the world, Ashkenazim and Svaradim and Hasidim, with every different type and every different style and every different background, sing and some of them dance. And you start to feel, after being there for six or seven days in a row, you start to feel this elevated experience. 
and you go through a Shabbat and it feels differently. Well, you know that feeling? Multiply it by a hundred and that's what it's going to feel like when Mashiach comes. When Mashiach comes, we anticipate his coming not because of miracles that we hope for or because of an easier life financially in any way. But what we're hoping for is an elevated life. And in this, the final song that we're going to sing tonight, we're going to read from the last two Pesukim and Pera Kuf Chav Bet and Tehillim. It's a song, it's a Perek that we say throughout the Tefillot of Sukkot in excitement and anticipation of the rebuilding of the Bet HaMikdash. But we say, we're doing it for our brothers and for our friends. This has been an unbelievably powerful experience to be able to sing along and inspire along with Mordechai Salem, Yaakov Salem, and Rabbi Avi Salem. Because you've poured out not just your beautiful skill and talent, but your love for a high verei, for our brothers that are in pain, that so desperately we need the Beit HaMikdash to be rebuilt. And it's been a tremendous honor, not just today, but the last few weeks, to speak sometimes along with Rabbi Yadid. Again, not because it's an honor to do this, no one would ever want to, but because it's an honor to watch a man who cares so deeply for his brothers and sisters and cares so deeply for Am Yisrael, who pulls himself out of his house again and again with whatever is happening at home, in the shul, in the school, in the community, to inspire and to show that love. And I hope tonight, together we've done that, that we've shown every single one of you how much we love you and how much we care about you and how desperately we want Leman Bet Hashem Elokeinu of Akshat Tov Lach Hashem we want you to rebuild your home for your good for Am Yisrael's good imagine if instead of Pesach being a place where we each have to celebrate quarantined alone in our home imagine if we were rebuilding the Bet HaMikdash and millions of Jews from across the globe would be making their way in the coming days towards your holy temple and bringing our korbanot, our korban Pesach, celebrating open with peace and love with brothers and sisters and families uniting together in your country. We'll figure out how to fit. You'll, you've always made it fit. Olam, you'll make us fit and you'll make our love ooze forth from us. In a week from tonight, please, Bore Olam, we have no idea when you plan on bringing the Mashiach. But for our brothers and for our friends, please bring peace to the world. Please bring peace to Am Yisrael. Please bring love and please allow us to celebrate with happiness, with health, and with joy in your Bet HaMikdash. Amen. Le
למען בית השם אלוקינו אדם לשלום thinking as this beautiful song was just going on when we want good we have to first be friends we have to love each other I feel so much love in this room even though so many people aren't here but I know the community and I'm Israel today there's greater love for each other. The love there is in this room is so beautiful. I want to thank Rabbi Haber for being a haver, a friend, a friend to the community, a friend to his students, and a personal thank you for being a friend to me. There's great friendship in this room. The Salem's, each one of them, so beautiful so loving. All of us here together honestly love each other. Hashem, we love each other. Let that love translate into goodness for us and for Klal Yisrael. I want to thank again, beautiful job by Rambam in his amazing, amazing talent of inspiring us with his music Thank you again to Kobe Natanel for putting his heart and sweat into this production like the last one. Special thanks to the showroom again for helping us make this as safe as can be. And just to end off, we'd like to open up the Hechal tonight and we'd like to break the locked heavens. And we'd like to ask Hashem like we do at the end of Na'ilah on Yom Kippur, where we say Shema Yisrael, we ask Hashem, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, we are yours, you are one, everything is from you, we believe in you, we know that you want us 
to come closer to you. We're going to say, Karati becholev aneni Adonai hukecha etzora. David HaMelech says, Karati becholev, I call you with all of my heart. Please, Hashem, hukecha etzora. I am committed to do every one of your mitzvot. I know it's the best thing for me. I am committed. Hukecha etzora. I'm going to do it. Maybe it was hard for me till now. Maybe I struggled here. Maybe I thought I couldn't do something. But I am committed. Hukecha etzora. Then we're going to say the words of Eliyahu and Navi. Hashem hua Elohim. Hashem is the only power there is in this world. And then we're going to crown Hashem all together. I hope you do it with us in your home. Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Imloch Leolam Vaed. Chabot. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Karati Bechone Karati bechole, vaneni Adonai hukecha etzora. Karati bechole, vaneni Adonai hukecha etzora. Karati bechole, vaneni Adonai hukecha etzora. Karati bechole. Karati bechole, vaneni Adonai hukecha etzora. Karati bechole, vaneni Adonai hukecha etzora. Karati bechole, vaneni Adonai hukecha etzora. Karati bechole. Karati bechole, vaneni Adonai hukecha etzora. Karati bechole, vaneni Adonai hukecha etzora. Karati bechole, vaneni Adonai hukecha etzora. Karati bechole. Karati bechole, vaneni Adonai hukecha etzora. Adonai hu Elohim, Adonai hu Elohim. Adonai hu Elohim, Adonai hu Elohim. Adonai hu Elohim, Adonai hu Elohim. Adonai hu Elohim, Adonai hu Elohim.
Shabbat HaGadol Shalom.